Hello, welcome back to Billy Ho Sports. We're going to finish up the Belmont at the Big A with the Belmont Oaks racing this weekend. I've already released a, a single video covering the other three stakes races, Belmont Derby, the Dwyer, and the Nerud stakes. Those three uh, will be there for you, so give them a look. I also have videos on uh, the Indiana and Iowa derbies. Those uh, should be pretty good races this weekend. And the summer's just heating up, folks. Uh, Saratoga's kicking off next week. Later on this month at Monmouth Park, the Breeders' Cup Challenge, Haskell Stakes. So you have to be subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the action. Clicking that like button goes a long way to sharing my content across YouTube. So I most appreciate that, too. Also... Uh, give me a follow on X. I'm at Billy Ho Sports. I rarely ever uh, promote that at all, uh, just because I don't really post all that often on X. But it's uh, I follow people on X. Uh, you get tons of great horse racing information. Sometimes you get news, breaking news, scratches, you know, where a horse is heading next. So it's always good to uh, be a part of social media uh, when it comes to getting just information-wise. So, at Billy Ho Sports. Let's get started. Okay, race number nine on the card is going to be the Belmont Oaks. That's nine and a half furlongs on the outer turf for the three-year-old Phillies. Uh, post number one, Pinup Betty is trained by Mike Maker. Jose Lescano is the jockey. Uh, this filly is uh, moving up in class. Took her a while to break her maiden, but then the next, uh, very next out, she won the grade three regret stakes at Churchill Downs, beating some pretty quality horses there. So I think she likes, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll mention this from time to time, I think she can handle the soft turf. They're expecting showers Saturday at uh, at Aqueduct, and it's going to be isolated. It's going to be scattered. Could It's going to be very hit and miss. But if they get a heavy enough rain, it's going to soften up the turf so uh, that's why I'm I'm kind of handicapping towards a softer turf, not like yielding as much as it just just maybe good. Uh, so that's for FYI. <clears throat> Post two is uh, dynamic pricing, trained by Chad Brown, ridden by Flavian Pratt. This uh this one's uh, going to be tough to handle, especially if the turf is soft like we just mentioned. She uh rolled on uh Kentucky Oaks Day on a yielding turf at Churchill Downs, pressed through some pretty fast fractions for that day and uh closed them out strong down the stretch. So, uh even if it like for some odd reason got pulled off the turf, it doesn't really look like the rain's going to be significant enough to do that. So, I I'm not planning on anything like that, but could move up off the turf. Post number three, Fun with Flags, uh, trained by Jerome Rainier. And uh, Manny Franco is going to ride. The Philly ships in from France after winning three out of four over there. Uh, she was out kicked late in the grade three pre uh, Cleopatra. A uh, very unique race I want to show you in full. Uh, they fire out going left hand turn and run about the first seven and a half furlongs going around like a left-hand turn, but then they go across the track into a final sprint and end up over on the right-hand rail. Uh, then it's a, like a dash for the final 450 meters to the finish line. So uh, the three horses, the one we would need to pay attention to in the yellow silks, that is fun with flags. And you can see she kicked clear to the lead when they hit that stretch, but just didn't have enough and got out kicked late. So uh, not a bad horse to have on your sleeper list. So uh, just a quick reminder to be subscribed to the channel along with that thumbs up and uh, follow me on X at Billy Hill Sports. Appreciate you very much. Let's move on. Post number four is Buku. Uh, Philip Bauer trains Joel Rosario rides. 3-0 Philly by Justify coming off the second place finish in the regret behind Pinup Betty. She was uh, disappointing previous to that Edgewood pre uh and uh she's a pretty well bred horse, obviously, by Justify, but the 
uh, and a, I, th- I considered an upgrade getting Joel Rosario in, but the declining speed figures, which we will look at past performances and I'll show you, the declining speed figures are of concern. Number five is secret satire. That is Andrew Balding trained. Frankie DeTore rides. I always like Frankie on a turf. Uh, this three-year-old filly ships in from Great Britain. Tenth place finish in the grade one Betfred Oaks. It was a very tough, grueling mile and a half race on very soft turf. And she really appeared to be struggling down the stretch late and got tired. So uh, her previous was actually a mile and five sixteenths. Uh, and that was in the grade three tatter sales. She won with a strong stretch drive in that one. So I have a lot of interest in the, in some of these imp- imports not trained by Charlie Appleby. So post number six is uh, Sagista, and that is Chad Brown trained. I read Ortiz aboard. That combo is deadly. Three-year-old Philly by Ghost Sapper. She won the grade two Wonder Again stakes at this track, Aqueduct, May 27th. Tracked in third most of the way, then moved in around the turn and kicked clear and hold held uh, on down the stretch. And that was coming off a maiden win going a mile at Keeneland. So Chad Brown's hitting at about 40% winners over the last two weeks. Got like nine winners and 23 starts. So yeah, Chad Brown on the turf, probably ought to take a look. So post number seven is She Feels Pretty, trained by Sherry DeVoe, ridden by John Velasquez. The uh, going back to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf, uh, she finished strong third place, right there on the line, missed by half a length. Uh, so she uh, just made her debut at uh, on Black Eyed Susan Day at Pimlico last month, and she rolled by six lengths uh, in her debuts, going eight furlongs, hilltop stakes. Uh, overwhelming best. She she stalked the pace and then hit the stretch drive and left them in the dust. She looks so strong going down the stretch. Very professional effort. So nice tune up. And uh, she's, uh, I think, the class of the field. Post number eight, Cinderella's Dream. This is Charlie Appleby, ridden by William Buick. That's a big time combo. The Philly ran, uh, ran off her first. She won her first four races and then faced grade one company, finished seventh. Uh, she did run tough in that race, but just uh, kind of flattened out at the end as they were spread across the track. Uh, didn't have much of a challenge versus a very tough field. That was going eight furlongs. She has not been further than eight furlongs and has not been two turns. So will be an interesting, and and some of these haven't, haven't been two turns. So post number nine is Cy B. And uh, that's Sherry DeVoe's second entry, Tyler Gaffley on rides. Three-year-old by English Channel finished just behind uh, Sagista in that Wonder Again stakes we watched. She broke awkwardly, though, at the beginning and had a little bit of a stumble out of the gate and then a little bit of a checkup early uh, in the uh, scrum for position. But uh, that was before the turn. She got her act together and was uh, pretty close on the lead for a closer. Uh, Broke her maiden previous to that going nine and a half furlongs. So let's uh, pull up the past performances and see what we can figure out. Okay, so we are going a a mile and three sixteenths on the outer turf, grade one, $500,000 purse. And uh, pay attention to these. uh, These these are the pars for this distance. So you want the speed figure of 94 Brisnet and then a late 88, middle 94, early 89. So that's uh, some pretty strong pars. So. As you can see, that that's what helped me narrow things down a little bit. Pin up Betty, very good, 86. Uh, but the, just the early and the uh, E1, E2 pace figures are just a little bit on the downside. They need to be the the middle one is the, the one of more concern, although she did run a 99 right here. Uh, but it looks like the mean is the mid 80s. And then you got the, the mid to upper 80s, which is good for a closing speed, but not just a tier below, I think. Here's dynamic pricing. This is the one I, I, I mentioned. The 95, 97, 89, uh, very good pace figures, plus 12, plus 8, and uh, closed strongly. It wasn't like a fire-breathing, uh, but it was pretty fast for a yielding turf course. So you had 22 opening quarter, 47 half. 
so uh, the pace of uh, a, a swifter pace would help. I think uh, moves up on soft, moves up off the turf. Uh, Buku, this is the one I or uh, let's see, I missed Buku, but this is fun with flags. And uh, these were the races you don't get a whole lot of information on the uh, on the Euro horses when you, as far as like pace figures go. But the the races I watched, the Cleopatra uh, showed speed, was up near the front of the pack, and uh, and had you know rolling down the stretch. And this is and going to be cutting back two sixteenths of a uh, cutting back an eighth of a mile. So in distance. So I, I think this is going to be a good spot for fun with flags. And I'm hoping to get some value out of that one. Jerome Rainier, uh, not as well known, obviously, as Charlie Appleby. And then Manny Franco, you know, he's a 22% jockey. So I, I feel pretty good about that horse competing. And here's uh, Buku. And, and you can see the declining figures uh, came off uh, one, at, uh, one at a mile, ran really well, 93 then dipped to a 91 in the Edgewood, finished sixth, uh, tiring on a yielding turf, going a mile and a 16th, then a mile and an eighth in the regret, closed to second place. But just uh, the speed figures, uh, just a little lax uh, as far as the 90s. You can see how low the the speed figures are in the past several. So that is the reason why I won't go there. Secret satire. Uh, the tenth by twenty four wasn't as bad as it looked on the, uh, but that turf was. I mean, you really, really had to see the turf to know how how rough it was and soft going a mile and a half, and that that just would wear a horse out. This is going to be significantly shorter distance. We're talking uh, nine and a half furlongs versus twelve. So uh, I think she'll. I think she will definitely benefit from the cutback. And uh, Sagista, like I said, speed figures, late pace, 79, 75s. I just don't think uh, the Chad Brown horse is there. Uh, it was a good win. Uh, I think up and coming horse, only making her fifth start. So it's got all the tools necessary, definitely. Would probably move up if it got pulled pulled off the turf, though, I'd say. And here's she's she feels pretty. You can see the 102, the mid-80s. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that that second uh clip faster, but when you run a 102 late pace, that's more than making up for it. Hitting that stretch on top and then clearing them. That's just, you know, all all signs point to all systems go here for this one. A nice four furlong work. Uh, on June 29th and then uh, another four and 47. So working sharply and uh, just really the top choice in my opinion. And here's Cinderella's dream. This one is interesting because the stats, I looked up the sire stats and although 8.1 indicates a definite route runner, the sire was a ve very good sprinter. So the, there's some speed in this horse somewhere. Uh, Shamadari was the sire I looked up. So pretty interesting there. And it was a pretty good seventh, actually, only four and a half lengths back. And then wins convincingly going a mile in the other ones. But the only concern is the two turns, because this one-mile race here at Newmarket, that was just a spread-out straight uh, sprint. There was no turns in that one whatsoever. And here's Cy B, who has the si similar uh, similar average wind distance english channel obviously the sire uh but still needs the speed the similar boat but does uh i think appreciate the the distance more so i think of the two i do think side b would be better uh closing and maybe picking up the pieces late uh as far as that goes i think those two are 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 two to watch to develop but uh like i said she feels pretty, I believe, was read as a horse that might be a more of a miler, but this uh, average wind distance of 7.4 indicates otherwise. That's more of a route. 6.8 and 6.6 .6 is more consideration of a miler to a sprinter, and 7.4, anything over 7, is more toward route racing. So I feel I feel just fine with that. I mean, she, she, she hasn't been uh, two turns yet, 
but I, I do think she's going to uh, relish the extra distance and uh, going to be a uh, very, very tough foe to contend with. So let's finish off the selections. Okay, well, she feels pretty. Well, she also looks pretty. Uh, so she's my top choice and going to be a key on top. So the number seven on top and then uh, the second slot, I'm going to use dynamic pricing, number two. Number three, Fun with Flags. Number five, Secret Satire. Number eight, Sil Cinderella's Dream. So I'll add in the, the imports and then uh, hit that all button for the third slot. Uh, a, a dollar trifecta would cost you $32. And what I'm looking for is one of these uh, other imports. Then Cin Cinderella's Dream is going to get bet down. But I think Secret Satire and Fun with Flags will, will have uh, double digit odds, one or both of them. So if if you could get one or two or at least one of those two in your in your uh, trifecta, then you're doing really good. But I do like the second best dynamic pricing. So if you wanted to be a little more hedged where you did wasn't 100 percent confident and she feels pretty, I would maybe uh, do a two seven over the the five and then all, you know, it'll be more expensive, be a lot more expensive. But you could back it down to 50 cent try and then still cost about the same amount of money. So. That's going to do it for the show. That's the Belmont Oaks Breakdown. Be on the lookout for more horse racing content coming very soon. Make sure you subscribe. Give that like. Follow me on X at Billy Ho Sports. And thanks for watching.